Hello, hello, everybody. Lori here from Unique in the Creek. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. Good evening. Say hello to me when you come in so I know who's watching. Hello. So, we are officially launching off Kit Craze. You guys have been driving us crazy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know we've been getting a lot of emails and messages. Are you bringing back Kit Craze from last year? And uh, we are. Um, there is limited supplies. I have to forewarn you. Okay. Oh, there's everybody. Look at everybody jumping on. Okay, go get your kits now. They're live. Go. I'll wait. Uniqueinthecreek.com. Wreath kits, trust me, they're awesome. I work very hard, very, very hard on putting these kits together for you guys. Um, so I think they're perfect. Now, if you watched me this morning, you seen a really pretty, oh my gosh, it's pretty. And it's already got a home to one of my best friends. Um, that is a kit. So if you watch me do the Joy one this morning, that is a kit. There is seven, seven kits released right now. Go over there. Don't crash our site. Our site gets crashed every so often. Um, so there's uh, a few kits that are ovals. A few, there's one that is... Um, uh, the character, which is the character board, which I did this morning. There is two on the large board. One is a ho 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 sign with absolutely fabulous ribbon. And the other one has a three piece plush elf set with, I didn't bring it downstairs, um, with a sign. And the sign says, Dear Santa, define naughty. So the elf will be holding the sign. It's really, really cute. And like I said, I've put a lot of thought into these kits. Um, good at, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Hello, hello. I hope everybody is well tonight. Look at me in my pajamas, but I put lip gloss on. <laughs> so tonight I'm going to be doing one of the oval kits. Now... I think there's four oval kits and they're going to be all done the same way. Now, um, you can do them the way I'm going to do it tonight. There's a few other ways I've done it on our YouTube channel. Um, Monkey's Creations has done um, a couple ovals on her YouTube site. Um, Jackie's Wreath and Things did a, an oval the other day. Stunning. Um, I think Andrea Brown from Ranch House Wreaths has done a, 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 an oval on a live. So they're floating around because the ovals just came out, what, maybe three weeks ago. And they are almost, almost beating out the triangle board right now. The triangle board, you wouldn't believe how many triangle boards we sell at this time of year. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Mavis. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But the kits are well, well worth it. Um, especially with the supply shortage right now. Um, for the kit tonight, we're going to be doing, you get this 12-inch sign, this 12-inch metal sign. And all the oval kits that are on there right now, and this is just this week's kit craze. They're all a 12 inch, okay? And this is um, the Believe in the Magic of Christmas. So it comes with the 12 inch metal sign. This ribbon is everything. It is so pretty. It also comes with this two and a half inch gorgeous holly with berries ribbon i wanted to keep it kind of nostalgic okay 
And also, this ribbon is everything. It is a velvet canvas ribbon. And the velvet is glittered. It is so pretty and a great quality ribbon. I love these two together. So you get these two in the kit. Obvi you obviously get you get the oval. You get the large the uh, oval board. You get two rolls, two rolls. Uh, and now I pre-cut some of them already, but um, two rolls of red and white border stripe mesh. Hard to get. You get two rolls of them. Um, check out the kits because um, I have some vintage, more vintage type kits, and they have a, a green mesh in it to keep it more vintage. This is kind of more fun. So double check that. And again, it's limited, guys. Once they're gone, they're gone. So we have a lot of them. But again, I can't stipulate once they're gone, they're gone, right? Um, you also get a 100-pack zip ties, two clothes pins, a pink wire nippers that I use all the time. They're very handy to come across, uh, to keep nearby. And my team even put, they wrapped little pipe cleaners in. <laughs> I love my kidding team. Um, there's two pipe cleaners and two cable mounts in a little baggie because we're going to put that on the back of the sign. Of course I'm wearing Mickey. they my jammies. Um, so that's a lot in the kit. And the price I think is $35.99 or something. Hi, Cree. Anyways, there's different kits. There's a Santa with cheetah. There's a vintage Santa. Um, there's this Santa. I can't remember what else. <laughs> Anyways, head over to uniquethecreek.com under wreath kits. Click on there and the wreath kits are there. Well, they should be. So let's go down to the board and build this sucker. Alrighty, here we go. Down, down, down to the board. Now I'm going to have to zoom up after because this gets really, really quite large. Okay, and we're going to build this step by step. You picked up a poinsettia kit, awesome. Yeah, I had a whole bunch of uh, of the foam poinsettia kits back in stock last night. I sent it out on a text message and they're all gone. So if you're not subscribed to our text service, you might wanna subscribe because I do send out stuff just on the text. So make sure you sign up and it also, Tells you when I'm going live and specials and all that stuff. You just ordered one of each candy. <laughs> the joy kit is so pretty that I did this morning. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is you're going to need you're going to need a rotary cutter. You're going to need scissors, and we are going to need a little bit of hot glue um, just for the cable mounts. Okay, now I like to use hot glue plus um, some super glue. You can use hot glue in E6000, hot glue in DAP. I like to use the hot glue to give it some, um, it, it, it sticks our cable mount on, um, immediately. And then the E6000, Gorilla Glue, DAP, and stuff like that. Um, it takes a little bit more to dry, but this will keep your, uh, your these things cable mounts <laughs> on permanently okay what i like to do though is on the back of the cable mount there is this little foam pad take that off okay it's no doing nobody any good peel it off so that way we we are going to glue the cable mount right to the metal and we don't have a there's no chance of the padding coming off then of the cable mount okay that's okay dana downs you go buy those kits girly <laughs> now the kits do ship separately from our kitting 
We have a kitting facility over in Buffalo, New York. So they do ship separately. So if you buy a kit and you buy some like extra boards or ribbons or anything, um, your boards and ribbons will come separately from your kit. Okay, just to let you guys know that. All right, so here's our nicely little folded pipe cleaners. Let's stick, you're gonna put your pipe cleaner right through the cable mount. And that way we can glue it easily. Okay. And if you hear any grunting or groaning or anything, it's just Duchess laying on the floor. She always has to be in my craft room when I'm crafting. I think it's because my craft room is possessed. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty convinced of it. <laughs> All right. So there is two little holes at the top and bottom of the sign. Um, I'm just going to line it up with a uh, a line on my cutting mat so I can see it. Uh, so I know that it's centered and I am going to put my cable mounts on the left and right. So uh, what I'm gonna do is take my hot glue. Now, if you, if you don't live in a really hot state or anything, um, you can just use hot glue. I use Gorilla hot glue sticks. But just be forewarned, they may, the cable mount may pop off with just, just hot glue. So I do both. Hot glue for immediate contact and then the super glue or E6000. To keep it on permanently. So there's one. Hi, Dorothy Quakenbush. So we're going to put, I do it the sides with the hot glue and then the top and bottom and middle with my Gorilla Crazy Glue. And if you're an avid crafter, you should have some Crazy Glue or some E6000 or some, some DAC, some kind of strong adhesive glue in your craft room. It's pretty much a must. There we go. We're going to set this sign to the side because we're not going to need it till near the end. Okay, so our sign is ready to rock and roll. I'm just going to put it over here in the amongst the mess of my craft room. Okay, so now we're going to prep for building our wreath. You get two rolls of 10 yard mesh. This is 10 and a half. I believe it's 10 and a half by 10 yard. Oh no, 10 inch by 10 yard. Okay. I've done all the calculations for you. If you want to make it like mine that I'm going to do tonight, we are going to cut both rolls at the same time. So you can cut it faster. We are going to cut 20 pieces at 34 inches. Okay. 34. Now, I have done a wreath, and it is the farmhouse wreath, if you see on the oval. I used only one roll of mesh. It turned out fabulous as well. So, if you want to do it like that, by all means, you can, and save your extra roll of mesh for another project. That is totally up to you. I am going to make a nice, big, full oval. All right, so I'm going to cut two at the same time at 34 inches. You just, hi, Dean. You just ordered a kit. Awesome. Okay, again, we're going to, I'm just going to cut both rolls until it's done. But we do need 20 pieces. And it's almost done anyways. There we go. I don't have quite enough left, but that's okay because I know I have 20 pieces already cut. Alrighty, so we got our mesh cut, 20 pieces, 34 inches. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our ribbons cut and ready to go. We are going to need 15, one five pieces 
of this ribbon, the um, berries with the holly. All right, and 15 pieces of, I love this ribbon. It's velvet, it's such a nice ribbon. 15 pieces at, of this ribbon at 14 inches, okay? So now I've already went ahead and cut 10 pieces. So I'm gonna pull my measure body out at 14 inches. And I'm gonna go around it five times. Like I said, I already cut 10 pieces to get it ready to go. So I need five more. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Slide it off. You're going to cut the ends. And we got five pieces of ribbon cut quite quickly. Okay, so there's that one. And then we're going to do five pieces of this ribbon. So you just, if you have your measure buddy, if not, you can use um, your cutting mat, cut it at 14 inches or use a piece of cardboard, whatever you you have. Um, if you do like the measure buddy, it does measure out to 20 inches from eight inches in one inch increments all the way to 14 on number one. And then number two goes all the way up to 20. So from here to here is 20 inches, which comes in quite handy when you're making the gnomes and the yarn and stuff like that. And then you can just bring it down different increments. This is another Unique in the Creek product. And this was a combination invention of mine and Dave's. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Now there is a slit at the top that you can slide your scissors through. I just kind of slide it off bring those measure buddy down, slide the ribbon off, and then just cut the ends. This uh, really works well if you're cutting uh, yarn and stuff like that, that you don't really want to slide off so because it'll go all over the place. Alrighty, and now what I'm going to do with these ribbons is I'm going to dovetail them. Yeah, everybody that love, ha, got, has a measure buddy loves their measure buddy. That is for sure. They're, it's $12.99. It's very lightweight, very durable, um, and you, it, it's great for traveling. So I'm going to dovetail these ribbons. And to dovetail them, and that means making that V at the end, you're going to fold over lengthwise your ribbon. Make sure your ends are butt up they're together there and you're going to cut from the fold to the corner to the outside corner and then when you open up you have that nice v shape okay and we'll do that again and this just gives your ribbons your tails of your ribbons a nice finished look okay so we're going to do that to all our ribbons So I, I tend to like to do no more than three ribbons when I'm dovetailing. That way I make sure that my V is not all wonky. Because if it gets too thick, it gets a little wonky. Hello and good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me for Kit Craze. If you guys wouldn't mind floating my boat sprinkling, glittering my page, you know, the S-H-A-R-E, I can't even spell, word, just onto your own page. Maybe one of your friends is sitting there bored and may like to learn this new technique because pretty much anybody can make a unique in the creek wreath because they're so much fun. There's so many things you can do with them. But the poinsettia, yay! The poinsettia and the tree kit, the traditional Christmas tree kit, are still on sale till the end of October. So if you're wanting to make your Christmas tree wreath, grab your Christmas tree kit or your poinsettia kit. 
because they are on sale. Alrighty. So 15, 15 of these and 15 of these. Okay. Easy peasy at 14 inches. Alrighty. Now, when I'm building my wreath, I like to make little packets. Now, these little packets are going to be for the outside of the row of the oval. So on the oval, you'll see a number one and a number two. Number one is the outside row, and uh, these are for the little packets. And we're going to need ten. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I need four more. So what I do is I fold my ribbon and I just like to get everything ready ahead of time. So fold one, fold the other, and slide it in. So that's seven. Now I do wreathing are really, really different than a lot of other people. It works for me. It works for teaching. So I just go with it. Eight. Hello from all over the place. Thank you guys for watching. Nine. This will be the tenth. Now, any of the other kits that are listed, I did do one this morning. I will be doing... Uh, the other two, so I will be doing the three-piece wreath attachment elf, probably Sunday night. And tomorrow I will be doing the ho-ho-ho one. Okay, so we need ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we got ten little ribbon packets. And then the other five... We're just going to fold them over and leave them individually. Now you do have a lot of ribbon left over, so we may make a bow. You can add more tails if you want more tails. It's totally up to you. This tutorial is just a suggestion on how you can put it together. So if you like what you see at the end, then I guess this tutorial is for you. If not, you can go check out, like I said, our YouTube channel under Oval. So there's the Unique in the Creek YouTube channel and Monkey's Creations YouTube channel. Okay, so we got five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm just going to put those over to the side because they're for row two. And we're not going to use those right at the moment. Okay, we're all ready to go. We got our mesh cut, our ribbons done. Now, what I'm going to do, I bought these picks last year. These real, look how cute these are. These little berry, thank you for blessing my page. These little berry picks. I did get them at Michael's and I always grab at the end of the year. So after the season, when it's like 80 to 90% off, I scour the the Christmas section and I grab all kinds of stuff for to use next year. So even though each pick was three dollars Canadian, right? Oh my gosh. Um I did not pay three dollars. So I paid 80 probably 80 percent. That's normally what I get everything for. So check out if you're a crafter or if you love wreathing and stuff, always check out Hobby Lobby and all your craft stores after the holidays and grab the sales for the next years. Okay, so we're gonna take these nasty tags off. Now these are not included in your kit, but I wanna show you how you can incorporate um, some picks if you would like. Now they have really, really cute picks at the dollar stores as well. You can put them the same way I'm gonna be putting these in. And I didn't, I haven't pulled out my <laughs> Christmas totes yet. I don't even know if they'll get out this year. Uh, but I wanted to incorporate just a little bit of green into my uh, wreath. And I had this, I think they're boxwood. Um, I'm not even sure where I got these. 
but um, I'm just going to incorporate a little bit of green into it with my berries and I'm going to cut this pick into threes. So I'm going to break it down. So one, so I'm just cutting down right to the next stem, two, and push it up, and three. So we're going to use 10 of these. And it's not really, it should probably be pine or something, but eh, I'm using what I have. I didn't feel like trucking out to the shed and pulling out everything out. Alrighty, we are ready to go. Let's put our dangerous tools away because Lori will cut herself. All right, so like I said, on the oval board, you got two holes at the top here. They're divided in, they're, um, or they're really called chamfered. Um, these are your hanging holes. So we're gonna put a zip tie. You can use wire, you can use um, ribbon and make a nice hanging bow to hang your wreath. Uh, and then you'll see a number one. Now you won't be able to see it on here, but there's a number one and a number two, and you, you'll see the lines going through the two holes. And that indicates um, the holes where the, each hole goes. It, it's pretty straightforward. We, I'm going to be using zip ties. Now you can most definitely use pipe cleaners or the tinsel ties, especially when you're using uh, ribbons and stuff. I love zip ties. It's just my thing. Um, I like the look, the aesthetic look on the back, that it looks nice and clean and neat. I like the fact that they're plastic and they're not gonna rust or anything. And the fact they get everything so tight. Okay, so you do get zip ties. However, if you want to use pipe cleaners, by all means, use pipe cleaners. Alrighty, we ready to rock and roll. Let's knock this out, get my clothespin and piece of mesh. So we got a 34 inch piece of mesh. All right, and like I said, this wreath is gonna get pretty big. Now what you're going to do, uh, we want the border of this mesh to show because it's so pretty in a wreath. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to do a ruffle and I'm going to scrunch it right down the middle. So when I ruffle, the edges are going to show and not the middle of the, just this red. Okay, so to ruffle it, we're going to use curl down. So this would be curl up. Rutch and let go and it curls up. We're going to use curl down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just gather or pinch, pleat, whatever you want to call it, accordion, right up the middle. And when I do this, the first one I start, I want to pinch it and I want the edge where I've cut to be facing down towards my board, uh, towards my cutting mat, okay? And that's important so we don't see any like stringies or frays or anything. So pleat, pleat. And what you're doing is you're with your four fingers and your thumb, you're dragging your mesh and gathering it right in the middle, just like this. Now you're not gonna wanna do this on a tablecloth cause you'll gather your tablecloth up with it. Okay. So there is the ruffle. Actually, that's a big ruffle. Maybe I'll do a kerfuffle. Because if I put that ruffle, you see how full this is gonna get? Hmm, well, let's try it. I'm gonna put a clothespin right where I pinched in the center, okay? And just let it go. Now you're gonna take your ribbon that you made a little packet and I'm just gonna pinch it right up the center where I folded it. Now, a lot of you have seen me do, and I I do this a lot and not too many other people do it. I kind of step my ribbon 
So what I'll do is I'll put this one and a half inch, not directly in the middle, just above, just like that, and then pleat it up the middle, pinch it up the middle, so that when I bring it upwards, the one and a half is already in the center uh, of the two and a half. Do you see how that lays? Then you don't have to really go and yank on it too bad um, with trying to make all your ribbons the same. And when you step it like that, you don't forget that your one and a half is in the middle because when you do all your ribbons around the edge, you want them all to look uniform, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna turn this sideways. So I'm starting right where the number one is and it's right in between the hanging holes. I got my ruffle. I'm gonna put my ribbon right over top and go around with my zip tie. Now I want my ruffle to go towards the outside like that so I can see it. All right, and now I'm going to add, and this is where you can you can add, um, like I said, any kind of picks. You can add some ornaments if you want. I'm gonna add a piece of greenery right into the zip tie. So these are all wired, so you can bend it. I'm gonna stick it right in the zip tie. So no hot glue, just like that. And same with my berry pick. I'll do it this way. Probably have to cut that down a bit. It's pretty long. There we go. There we go. So I stick it right in the zip tie. Ooh, that's going to be pretty. And pull it tight. All right, and you're gonna go down with your zip tie wire nipper and cut off the zip tie. And that's our first piece. Now you can move, I want the greenery behind the berry, just kind of sort of like that. I'm gonna try the next one as a kerfuffle. A kerfuffle is folded and it kind of lays a little flatter than the ruffle. So I want, I'm gonna see if it works a little better. So I'm not gonna go in the next hole. I'm gonna skip this hole and I'm gonna go to the next one here. So just put it, this hole to the outside of the board we're gonna use. So just um, put your zip tie in almost like an L shape so that when you go to do it up, the flat part of your zip tie is going to meet with the tail. If you have it the other way, you'll find the zip tie will, you won't hear that zipping noise and um, it won't lock. All right, let's grab another piece. Now this, like I said, I'm gonna do a kerfuffle this time. And a kerfuffle is you're gonna use curl up, okay? Bring one end, approximately in the middle, okay? Bring the, so that was the bottom. I'm gonna bring the top just a little over the piece I just brought in the bottom, right? And then I'm gonna scrunch right up the middle of that. So it makes a ruffle, but it's a little flatter. I think with this size mesh, it really doesn't matter, but it's a little bit flatter. Let's see. So we're gonna put a clothespin in the center, get a ribbon packet, get it ready to go. I'm gonna step it, because I stepped the other one. So I'm putting the one and a half just above my two and a half a little bit. 
Yes, there is other Santa kits other than this one. There's a cheetah one. There's a vintage traditional one, which is really pretty. So I'm gonna take this off, put the center of my mesh right on the zip tie. Okay, just like that. Put my ribbon on top of the mesh and go around. And before you get it tight, you wanna make sure the ribbons are the same length. And I'm gonna add my little bit of greenery. Again, you guys can just buy, you know, I'm sure you have picks everywhere. Or even at the dollar store, they have some cute ones. Or you don't have to add anything. It's pretty just as is. So I'm gonna put it in this side and look, no hot glue. Okay, so I've kind of crisscrossed them and pulled nice and tight. Yeah, I think I like the kerfuffle. The ruffle is pretty. It kind of ruffles a little better and sticks up more. But the kerfuffle makes the uh, ribbons lay nice and uh, uniform here. So I think I'll go with the kerfuffle. And cut that off. Bend these. And then we can fix all this. This is a pretty big bunch of berries. I probably should have cut these down a bit. Oh, that's okay. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me tonight, guys. All right, so we're gonna skip that one and go to the next one again. And we're gonna do this all the way around. I'm not sure. We'll just keep going with it. So again, to do the kerfuffle, all you have to do is unroll it, curl up, bring it about halfway, bring the other one about halfway. And with these ovals, I need a bigger table because they are pretty big. <laughs> And you're just going to gather right up the center by dragging it. And I'm gonna flip it so that the seam where the cut edge is facing down towards the table. Put my clothespin on. And get my ribbons. Again, I'm gonna step that ribbon up at the top. Pinch it in the middle so that when I flip it up, my one and a half inch is always centered. Take again, we're gonna face the ruffle going towards the outside because we wanna see that white, that white border. Put your ribbon tail on and come around. greenery yes I am on YouTube as well right now Bring 
greenery up to the center, bring the berries up. And do this really tight and snip off the zip tie. Now you can add hot glue as you want, as well as having it zip tied in to make sure that your pick is not going to come out. That is up to you. And like I said, you don't even have to use picks. It's gonna be really pretty even without the picks. So we're skipping that one, we're going on to this one. I think I'll do half with the berries and the greenery and the other half without because it can add or take them away so you can see what it would look like both ways with and without picks. It's a lot of mesh in there. <laughs> so if you'd want to make it smaller, I was just using up all my mesh so I don't have any more kicking around. You can make your ruffles a little bit smaller if you want. Or if you want big full ones like mine, then you cut them at 34 like I did. Okay, so there's the green. Again, we're skipping that one, going on to this one. Yeah, like I said, I do put a lot of thought into these kits. So when I'm making the kits, it's a like a couple day affair to make sure I get the perfect ribbon, the perfect mesh, the perfect everything. All right, 
And then this half I'm going to do with no berries and no greenery and see how we, which one we like better. Obviously, it's much easier when you're not putting picks in. <laughs> you can do it a little faster, but it works. So I do have the, each pick crisscrossed in the center there. done this way. Okay, so there is the side with berries and greenery and stuff. So now I'm going to continue with just the mesh and ribbons. Because I can go back in and add everything if I want more berries and greenery or just pull them out if I don't want them. So I wanted to show you guys both ways. So we're going to angle it to the outside, put our ribbons right on the mesh, and just go around and tighten the zip tie. Now before I do it super tight, I make sure that my ribbon tails are both the same length on each side. And then pull it tight. Now I'm a, I'm a very simple girl. I don't, I'm not into frou-frou and all that stuff. So I think I'll probably like it without all the greeneries and berries. I'm not sure. <laughs> Unlike a wireframe, we're building this wreath step by step, which is a bit different than a, a wire work frame where you do poofs and then you do your ruffles and then you do your ribbons. And so we just do this step by step. So that's why I get everything ready to go before I start building the wreath. And because we do it step by step and everything is like precise cuts, it's really easy to figure out pricing because you can figure out exactly how much ribbon you used, how much mesh you used, what the board cost, how much the zip ties cost, all that stuff. in here. Reef building is hard work. I'm just 
just kidding. It's actually a lot of fun. It's pretty easy. The oval is quite large, as you can see. So it's a bit time consuming. More than the large board or a character board or anything. But it's well worth it because the size is just gorgeous. I can't even tell you, I think I already told you how much I love this green and red velvet ribbon. It's so pretty. And then it's got the red berries sparkle too. Just gorgeous. Pat on the back for me. I did good. Yeah, I did 34 inch mesh pieces. However, you can definitely cut them smaller. I'm one of those wreathers. I don't like um, open mesh laying around. So I knew I needed 20 pieces of mesh. And so what I did was there's 360 inches on each roll. So if you double that, because we had two rolls, that's 720 inches. And then I divided it by 20 because that's how many pieces we needed. And it gave me, I think, 36. So I did 34 to give, you know, just in case the um, mesh was shorted and wasn't quite a 10 yard. However, you can most definitely make it a lot, make your cuts a lot smaller. And this is getting really big and I'm totally running out of room. Let's make some room here. Yes, the ovals, people are just loving the ovals. I think the oval is like my new favorite uh, board. I just love, love, love the size and consider it's not, I think it's only 20 or 30 cents more than the large board. So the pricing is fabulous. It's not heavy. It is a little bit thicker than like a character board because it's cut out in the middle. So we need that sturdiness. Still made with recycled plastic see this stepping that stepping really really does work that little trick I and I you notice that all my one and a half are all in the middle of the two and a half and I don't even have to think about it the boards are made here in Canada, North America, proud. So we never have to worry about shipping from overseas. We never run out of boards. And we've created quite a few jobs. So yay us, even from, like I said, we do have a facility over in Buffalo. So we've created jobs in Canada and the US. And we're cr quite proud to say that. That when wreath frames are sold out everywhere, we are not. Now, our shipping, I have to say, our shipping is a little bit slower than normal because we have been totally bombarded. But like I said, these kits are shipped from Buffalo, right from our shipping department, our uh, kitting department. So they ship out a little faster than just our boards. Um, 
because we we get in between 800 to 1,000 orders almost every day. So we are busy. And that's not including Amazon and our wholesalers. But yes, Canadian proud. We were asked many times to get our boards made and I'm sure it'll be cheaper. I'm sure we could do it a lot cheaper in China. But when I was approached about it, I said, absolutely not. And I'm certainly glad with what's going on today in the world of shipping that I made that decision. Because our prices are not too bad. All right, this is the last one. It was a kit, Maria, and I think this one is sold out. There are other oval kits, um, just as pretty. I just don't know if they're sold out as well. Guys, our kits are very, very popular. And um, please don't get mad at me <laughs> if they're sold out. I do my best to have enough. So I don't know. What do you guys think? The berries in the greenery or just the ribbon tails? I'm torn. The kits are at uniqueinthecreek.com. Um, if you're Canadian, your, uh, the website will recognize your Canadian IP address and we'll price it into Canadian funds. And we have free shipping over $125, I believe. And if you are in the US, your prices will be in US funds. And again, free shipping over, I think 120. You guys like the berries and greenery? So we got, let's finish it. Because like I said, it's really, really easy for me to to add more to it, not a problem. Now, when I put my sign on, there's my sign. Oh my gosh, this is gonna look pretty. Um, my sign is gonna go right here and right here. Okay, right directly across, straight in the middle. So, and there goes everything. If anybody wants to come clean my craft room, so I'm just going to put a little mark here so I remember that's where my sign's going because I don't really don't need ribbon tails there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a zip tie down and up the opposite holes that I used on the outside. So do you see that? So I put, we used here and here. So we're going to go in between here. We're going to skip here and we're going to go in between here again. Berries and greenery, every other one. Yes, good idea. So I don't need to put, um, I do need to put mesh here, but I don't need to put ribbon tails, I don't think. And we're skipping down and up. So there's another 10. And these, this will go a little bit faster. So, so far we are at 32 inches long. And I'm gonna have to lift this up so you guys can see the whole thing. So we're at 32 inches. I think I am going to do berries and greenery on every other. And that way I only have to use, well, there's 10, so that would be five. I don't know if that's not an even number. Hmm. Huh. I could do some berries and greenery in the center here.
I know, Christy. Uh, the kit, uh, it's because I put so much thought into the kits. I price them very well. Like, I, there's, I do not price gouge. I, I, I don't at all. I could charge probably 50 bucks, but I, I don't. Okay, so we're going to put, get our single um, ribbons. Now I'm only gonna put one ribbon per zip tie. And we still have the 34 inch mesh. So I'm going to do, I think I'll do a ruffle on the inside. So we're going to ruffle it right down the center. Where's my measure? And when you end on your ruffle, you want to end with your mesh cut part facing down as well. So we don't want to see any strings if we don't have to. Close pin it. Grab a ribbon, doesn't matter which one. Here we go. So I'm gonna take my ruffle right in the center, put it right over top of the zip tie here. Take my ribbon. Now this is where you can put, you can put two pieces of ribbon. You can continue like I did on row on uh, row two, or row one, sorry, with two pieces. That's totally up to you. Pull it, and we're gonna cut the zip tie. Ah, I'm stuck. Okay, now this is gonna get really, really full. I actually think maybe I should use the inner hole. Hmm, let me try something. Try it over on this side. Now, this is like only my third time using the oval, so it's still all trial and error for me as well. Really pretty ruffle. I'm thinking maybe of using the ins, because the ruffle is so large, like it's a big ruffle. If I use this to the outside of the board, Oh, the vintage oval Santa, that was my favorite. That's left. I know, it's pretty big. So let's try it. I'm gonna put it right in between the hole and the outside and the inside of the board. Put my ribbon on. Yeah, I think I like that better. Gives it a little bit of space and doesn't look all crammed. Yeah, but that's what I like. Push that head towards the back. Now this is gonna get... So the next one here. Holy, this is too big. <laughs> I'm still running out of room. Okay. Yes, I like that much, much better. It doesn't look so crammed and you can really see the, because you want to see your ribbons. You put all that work into it and it does look really nice with the berries here. I must say. 
So I am going to use the hole to the inside of the board here. My back, Patricia, is just killing me. <laughs> but thank you for asking. And I need a green. Yeah, I like it better too. Especially once we get started putting everything in. Because you can't judge your wreath until it's absolutely done. And then when it's done, then it is when you can do some tweaking and stuff. Now, if you use pipe cleaners, oh. oh no, I let go, I let go. Ah, man down. There we go. I let go of my zip tie. And there's a lot of mesh in there. Corey, what are you doing here? Okay, let's restart that one. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I was just trying to see which side I like best, with berries or without. And plus, the berries and greenery don't come in the kit, so I just wanted to show how you can incorporate something else into your wreath. Now, with this amount of mesh, you have to twist really hard if you're using a pipe cleaner. There we go, that's better. out. Put the mesh kind of in behind your ribbons. Why I'm doing it upside down, I have not a clue. I think if you, for those of you that got the kit or doing the ovals, I think I would do your mesh at 34 inches. And this is what happens when you do a live, right? When you're making it live. I think, uh, not 34 inches, 24 inches. I think 34 is just a little too bulky. No, I did not heat seal the mesh. Yeah, 34 inches, like I said, I don't want any mesh left, left over. And I think if you start on the row two instead of row one, now I did row two for teaching purposes, so you guys could see, but if you're building this, I would start on row two and then that's the inside and then go to row one, which is the outside, because I'm kind of squishing my ribbon tails here.
I would have to calculate how much um, the mesh was, how much the board was, how much ribbon I used. Um, so you have to consider all that. Um, how much time? So I'm at an hour and 10 minutes now. I'm, I'm actually teaching, so it probably wouldn't take as long as it's taking me right now. But I think people are at, you can ask probably, I don't know. I, I hate that question because it depends. Are you a seasoned reether? Do you have, you know, are you um, selling on Etsy where there's fees? There's all th kinds of things that you have to take into account. So I would count um, your, in, like what you've put into your wreath. Um, and then times that by 2.5. Now, a lot of people say three. If you're a seasoned wreather and you have a big clientele, you can um, charge times three. If you want to get some customers and you're just starting out, I would charge your supplies, whatever it costs your supplies, times 2.5. Ballpark, $75, Yeah, there's too much mesh in here. Too much mesh. Said nobody ever, but yes. 140. See, I don't sell my wreaths, so asking me is like not a good thing because I don't know. There's too much ruffle. Well, mine would be Canadian. All right, we're in the center. I'm just doing mesh because my sign is going to go right there. Yeah, it could be every third hole. Or just not cut. I would suggest maybe just cutting your mesh at 24 inches. And I will, pro when I redo the uh, tutorial on YouTube, I will probably put that on the lower third to cut it at 24 inches. And that'll give you about a half a roll left over that you can use on a, some curls on another project. And this one I'm not putting any ribbon because my sign is going to go here. This one I have to take out because that's on the inside. Cut this one off. It's easy to fix a mistake. <laughs> you just cut the zip tie. Okay. Squishing all my ribbon tails, we'll have to fix them all. So when you're building your, like I said, when you're building your wreath, it's 
start on the inner. If I started on the inner, you guys wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. Yes, I will be donating a whole bunch to nursing homes and stuff again this year. Me and Molly will be going around. Oh, we ended up with here, so we'll put... Almost done. I'm breaking a sweat here, y'all. Only because all the lights are on and I have a long sleeve in it. Dave's got the heat cranked, so if you're Dave's watching, you can turn the heat down. The vent is right above me. This is not a pancake grease. <laughs> that is for sure. She is stuffed full. A nice birthday. Looking a lot like Christmas, it sure is. Oh, hi, fiber crap. Oh, shoot. I okay. This is why I should do these kits on a tutorial and not live, because if I did it on a tutorial, I wouldn't I wouldn't have done it 34 inches. I know I'd have known to do it on the inside. Couple more. Yes, ma'am, you will be able to see Santa.
Yeah, these ruffles are way too big. <laughs> way too big. Oh well, live and learn. Thank God, two more pieces. Yeah, my ribbons are getting lost in all this mesh. Way too much mesh. One more and it's no ribbon. It's just the center one. And then we'll put our sign on and we will be done. Thank God I'm roasting here and Dave must not be watching me right now because he has not turned the heat off like I asked. One more. Oh, this one's no ribbon. Good God in the garden. Yes, definitely. I don't think we need, definitely don't need 34 inch. I may end up redoing this tomorrow because it's, 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 it's huge. It's full. And I'm not liking how my ribbon tails are laying because it's just too full. Too full. But I will put Santa on and you guys can see. So I'm going right here and right here. Where's my sign? Here it is. Flip it over. The back's nice and neat. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put a, a hanger in. 
So I'm just going down this hole, up this hole, close it, and cut this off. And we have our hanger. So that is the top. Yep. And now I'm just going to go take my pipe cleaners and where I put no ribbons right there, we're going to go right in between down the holes. Now you won't be able to see what I'm doing. It's just right in the middle. And then once you got both in, just give it a little twist on the back. One, two, and I'm just going to twist it until I get the other one on. Yeah, I'm going to redo this with less mesh for sure. But you guys can see what it looks like. flip it over so you can see where my pipe cleaners went since you, you won't be able to see right now. Okay, we'll go back down the holes with the pipe cleaner here so there's nothing that's scratch. Same with here. All right, now we get a, actually it doesn't look too, too bad once we get all those, our ribbons all pulled out. It's very full. <laughs> A little too full, I think. It does look nice with the berries. Maybe it does need ribbon tails there. We have like kind of a blank spot there. This needs to be a little bit tighter on here. There we go. Well, it's very pretty and very fur. Yeah, if I made my tail, it's just, there's just, two, I was trying to use up all the mesh, so I didn't have any lying around, and it's just too much mesh. There's just too much in there. Just too much. So since it is a, a tutorial, I am going to, I am going to redo it. But when you're doing something live, you really, you're kind of just flying by the seat of your pants here. So I need tails here for sure. And yeah, it is beautiful. It is big and beautiful. Like I said, it just 
very, very full. It's gorgeous though. Just not laying the way I want it. So, but I do like the berries and the greenery on the outside. I think there's too much berries. I think I need to split. So I'll take this pick and just split it into little pieces. I know this sign is everything, right? Anyways, well, that is the one, one of the kits with the 12 inch sign. Um, I will, I think I'm going to redo it. I will redo it tomorrow. I'll send out a text when I'm going to redo it. I'm also going to be doing the ho, ho, ho one, which is the same red stripe. You get two and a half inch roll of dot. Then this ho, ho, ho ribbon. You get a one and a half inch black ribbon. So these two will go together. You get a large board and you get a ho, ho, ho sign that'll go right across. I think that is going to look fabulous. Isn't that going to be cute? So we'll do that tomorrow too. I know I love the, I, I, I like the round sign on the oval boards rather than the oval sign on the oval boards. I don't know why. It just, it looks so nice, but we'll do a redo. But it is really, really pretty. There's your back. Yeah, I'm going to probably do every other one. We'll see. I kind of know what I want to do now since I put this together. And I don't want you guys wasting your mesh and ribbons when you don't need to use that much, that much uh, supplies ribbons and, and mesh and stuff. Mostly the mesh. Anyways, well, thanks for joining me. Um, I will, like I said, I'm going to redo this tomorrow. So I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. Make sure you sign up for my text messages because I will text you guys when I'm going to go live and redo this. And we'll get her done. A neighbor would love it, Lori. I know, but I want to redo it properly. And I want to redo it the way it's supposed to be done, especially since it's a kid. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your week, uh, rest of your evening, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.